Hi, my name is Dr. Marlene Merritt, and I'm here to explain blood sugar because I realize that nobody really understands blood sugar really well, which is why I've kind of made this video called Blood Sugar for Dummies. So in describing blood sugar, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to have people understand what happens when they eat things and why they can't seem to lose weight and why we, this whole country has an epidemic of being tired and feeling terrible, basically. So let me kind of explain what happens in, uh, we'll start out with if it's a normal person. If a normal person eats, like, say, a bowl of oatmeal, the oatmeal goes into your stomach, it goes into your small intestine, and it breaks down into glucose, which is the form of fuel that your body uses. And the glucose goes through the walls of the small intestine and into the blood. And now it's called blood glucose, which is what they measure on a blood test. Literally, the number of glucose molecules goes up, and that's what they're measuring. So glucose by itself actually can't be dealt with in the body without insulin. So insulin gets released by the pancreas. The insulin takes the glucose and puts it into the cells. And it does that until the glucose is at a low level, and then you don't need the insulin anymore. And then, in theory, you burn fat until the next time you eat. And then the blood sugar goes up again, and then the insulin deals with it, brings the level back down, just like that. Now, type 1 diabetes is when somebody has glucose in their system, but they don't have any insulin. And the body can't recognize it without insulin. And so the glucose just kind of runs around the system until the kidneys finally figure out there's too much sugar there and it flushes it out. And that's actually how they found diabetes back in the late 1800s is a woman peed on the ground and the ants came to her urine because there was so much sugar in it. But that's type 1 diabetes. So that's how a normal person's blood sugar works is the insulin takes the glucose and puts it off to the cells. Now, back in the mid-1980s, there was a change in the public health policy where they associated fat, saturated fat causing heart problems. And so then began what is really a low-fat health policy. And so that low-fat health policy had people eating like a bowl of, you know, if you were being healthy, it was a whole grain cereal with skim milk and you'd have like a half a banana and a small glass of orange juice. And then you'd go to lunch and you'd have a sandwich and if you were really healthy it was whole grain and low fat turkey and baked potato chips and maybe a diet soda. And then in the afternoon maybe you'd have a whole grain granola bar. And then at dinner you'd have like pasta with vegetables or you'd have like a, you know, baked chicken with rice but you wouldn't put any butter on the rice like that. And so all day, your blood sugar would go up and down all day. And your system dealt with that for a while, but at some point it started to break down because it was an enormous amount of carbohydrates for what your system is technically able to handle. So how it started to break down is your body started to predict you were going to have a carbohydrate. So when your blood sugar started to rise, your body would give you insulin, but it would give you too much. So now what would happen is the insulin would do its job. It would take the glucose out of the system and put it into the cells. And the problem here is that you still had insulin left. And insulin left in the bloodstream does a few things. One is it causes sugar cravings. The insulin in your bloodstream is what causes you to want more carbohydrates, more sugar. And so people will then, you know, because insulin wants to be entertained with sugar. So it, people then would go and you know, they'd have sugar cravings and they have carb cravings all day. So if you eat more carbohydrates, again, the insulin will go up. So it goes back and forth like this all day. Insulin in your bloodstream also tends to cause what's called reactive hypoglycemia. The reactive hypoglycemia is because your system reacts by giving you too much insulin. And hypoglycemia is where the insulin drives down the blood sugar too low. There has to be a base level of uh, of a glucose in your bloodstream because 30 to 40 percent of your blood brain function comes from this. So you need to be able to have good glucose in your system to keep your brain functioning. So when the insulin is in your bloodstream and it drives the glucose down too low, now you can't function. And people walk around saying, I can't think and I'm too tired and they're irritable and they can't concentrate and they have terrible memory. That's all because your brain's basically not being fed. So that's reactive hypoglycemia, like too low blood sugar, but you could also call that too much insulin. Then the other, the last thing that's for most people, what's most predominant for them, is that the presence of insulin in your bloodstream completely prevents you from burning fat. So now you have kind of an interesting thing happening. You have no energy coming from your bloodstream because you have no blood sugar there, and you can't access fat, which is the storage unit for fuel for your body. So when people walk around and they're tired all the time and they don't know why. And then they have sugar cravings, so they'll eat some, I don't know, whatever, a scone, a bagel, a crackers, whatever this is, and it pulls your blood sugar back up, and the insulin goes back up again, but you feel better because your blood sugar's back up. 
Now, there's a couple of side things that happens. When you have hypoglycemia and your blood sugar goes down, there are a couple of glands called your adrenals. They sit on top of your kidneys, and one of, they do a bunch of different things. But one of the things that they do is they jump in every time your blood sugar gets low to bring it back up. So if people have you know, a history of kind of eating a lot of carbs where their blood sugar goes up and down, your adrenals are constantly jumping in trying to get your blood sugar to go back up. And at some point, they get tired and they stop working. And that also contributes to people being tired. Now, one of the big symptoms of people who have blood sugar issues and some adrenal fatigue is they tend to wake up in the middle of the night. Your blood sugar has gotten too low, basically, and your body is kind of in a panic because it doesn't have enough blood sugar to keep your brain functioning, so it wakes you up, basically, to keep you from falling into a coma. So that's what happens on, on the aside. So when people talk about adrenal fatigue, Yes, adrenal fatigue is rampant in this society, and one of the main reasons for it is because people don't manage their blood sugar properly. So going back to where we were here from hypoglycemia. So now if somebody has insulin constantly in their bloodstream going up and down, at some point what happens is what's called insulin resistance. And that's because those cells that took the glucose, they get kind of tired of being bathed in insulin all the time. And so they start becoming resistant, and they don't want to pick up the glucose when the insulin molecules are bringing it by. And so what happens is a couple things. One is the glucose starts to back up in the bloodstream. Now, the body manages this for quite some time, and it does this by turning that glucose into fat. And in doing that, it's not a natural pathway. It kind of has to force that to happen. And the middle step between that is triglycerides. And so when somebody comes in and they have high triglycerides on a blood test, I know it's almost always because they're eating too many carbohydrates. So you've got fat being made over here from the, the glucose that's in your bloodstream. You have an inability to burn fat because you have insulin constantly present in your blood. And then the other thing is, is insulin resistance causes something called metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome is kind of a bunch of different symptoms, but what we see most often is that it causes hormonal problems. And the hormonal problems it causes are in women it causes high estrogen and high testosterone. And so when you see like those older women and they've got like thinning hair up here, that's male pattern baldness from high testosterone. Now for men, it causes high estrogen and low testosterone. And what that looks like in men is they kind of, they get man boobs and a, and a beer belly. That's what high estrogen causes. And that's metabolic syndrome as a separate thing, just causing hormonal problems. But on the side there, you also have weight gain that comes from estrogen. This is the reason that they inject estrogen into cattle is because it causes weight gain in cattle. So what you've got is high estrogen. It has its own little vicious circle happening over to the side. High estrogen causes weight gain, which causes fat cells. Fat cells manufacture their own estrogen, which then causes weight gain. And so you've got that going on there. So basically, you've got weight gain happening because you have estrogen in your bloodstream preventing you any access to fat. You have glucose backing up in the bloodstream and the body converting it into fat. And then you have estrogen levels causing you to retain fat and create some more. So this would be why nobody is losing weight in this country. So as what we've done now, so we've gone from hypoglycemia, we've moved into insulin resistance because it's all along a line here. And so most of the patients that we see have some combination of hypoglycemia and insulin resistance. Some people are flat out in insulin resistance. But as time marches on, what happens then is people start becoming diabetic. And the way that happens is because at some point, the body cannot convert enough glucose over into fat through the triglyceride cycle I was just telling you about. And so the glucose starts to back up in the blood stream. And then people come in, they're like, you know, I can't get my blood sugar under control. It's too high. It's like, okay, well, so what the body does is it basically kicks your pancreas in an effort to try to have it put out more insulin to manage all of the glucose that's in the bloodstream. And at some point, the pancreas gets tired, and then you have diabetes. And it was all along a line like this. The whole thing is simply a progression. And it is actually reversible, but it is a progression. 81% of people at the age of 55 are diabetic or pre-diabetic. 81%, so that's four out of five adults at the age of 55. Now, this doesn't come out of the blue. It comes because they haven't managed their blood sugar for decades, basically. It's kind of like this when I describe it to people. It's like you're given a certain amount of points for carbohydrates in your lifetime, and most people have used those all up before the age of, say, 35. And so from this point forward, you actually, if you want to be healthy, you don't get to go back to how you were eating there. Like, we've used up all of our points. Now we've got to figure out what to do from this point forward to keep from being sick 
or ending up as diabetes.